Okay, hi. Um, so uh, this week we are on chapter 21 of our book club on the outstanding user interfaces with Shiny book. Um, and uh, yeah, today Arthur's going to do a presentation about um, automating away some of the, the, the work involved in creating an HTML template um using a package which i'm not sure i should pronounce because I, i'm not entirely certain I, i'm going for sharp and day but I, I don't i don't know anyway i'll leave it over to Arthur to mispronounce it throughout this chapter um cool right can you see uh can you see my screen yeah. yeah 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 perfect okay yeah so yeah we're um this chapter is going over a uh, charpente uh, which is a French for 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 framework, uh, um, or, uh, and um, just kind of quite fitting. Uh, Charpentier would be like a, a, a carpenter. Um, so uh, kind of a nice hex, given given what it's all about. I, you know, at, at the risk of giving away all the value in the presentation up front, I, I think I can make maybe an analogy that, that will really summarize what I understand this package to do. Hope, hopefully um, you're familiar with the, the thing to which I'll be comparing it. Um, so I, I think that um, Charpente is to creating um, template packages, what uh, Gollum is to creating shiny apps in, in the following sense that, um, it really just puts in place all of the scaffolding that, that's needed uh, with a few simple commands. And then uh, also makes easy, uh, or at least streamlines kind of some of the tedious tasks uh, of creating a, a template package from an existing you know, HTML template and bringing it into, into R. So um, yeah, maybe let me stop there and see if that makes sense to all concerned. I think Russ is is expert in Gollum. Uh, Trevin, I'm not sure if if you've if you've uh, worked with it much or if that makes much sense. An alternate would be kind of it's a little bit like use this, uh, use this like create package or create project in the sense that it just puts in place a lot of um, scaffolding that you need and and has kind of utility functions that allows you to uh kind of accomplish some some actions pretty quickly that otherwise would be a little tedious to accomplish um yeah anyway if that if that doesn't make sense then maybe maybe it'll make a little bit more sense uh kind of as we as we as we go as we go through this so i mean the motivation is actually quite short but i i feel like the motivation could have been even shorter as like see the past four chapters uh you know it's like do you do you really do you really want to do that manually and i think the answer should probably be for most of us a resounding no um i mean unless unless uh you know unless it's kind of a learning exercise to kind of go through and create a, a template sort of by by hand um probably it would be better if the, if uh, if there existed some some tool to make this easier and indeed there does with the shop um uh and, and and so like kind of it, it does a couple things for you right um and we're going to go through each one of these in turn to some to some degree um so it it helps you create these dependency objects so that your package can clearly depend on um you know html uh frameworks that that exist somewhere whether that's within locally within your package or externally with uh within you know some content delivery network um second thing it does which i thought was really clever and i think i must have missed this reference or, or not made much of this reference in an earlier chapter is it it, it utilizes um uh, this package, or maybe it's just a shiny app um, uh, by a former R Studio um, engineer that, in effect, kind of takes raw HTML and then converts it into into R, which is really quite nice. Um, so that you could kind of take some some uh, HTML that exists somewhere else and quickly quickly mock up uh, a reasonably uh, faithful um, equivalent in, in R or Shiny, you know, using like Shiny tags and or HTML tools tags. 
Uh, and then the last bit, which in honesty, I didn't go too much into, um, and depending on interest, you know, we could we could either gloss over today or go and try to go into a bit, uh, go into uh, in some detail kind of live together is, is uh, easing the uh, JavaScript uh, management, right? So your, your, your overall, your overall framework would kind of depend on, uh, you know, it would need to be one would probably want it to be an R package. So you need to set things up as an R package. The R package needs to have dependencies uh, among them on, uh, in this case, like it'll consist not just of R code, but it'll consist in this case, in particular, a template package of some other, um, you know, some other things that will probably live in the ints directory and other other directories of, uh, you know, HTML and uh, other other assets, CSS, uh, other, other assets. Um, We'll probably have some frame, maybe have some some functions that'll kind of tra translate some HTML components into um, into R. Uh, so this would be kind of your scripts, uh, and then you know you'll have some some JavaScript on the side, um, right? Um, so I guess kind of the 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 first first little uh, idea that I guess is e easily dispensed with is so if you load this uh, Charpent, um package, you have this HTML to R. Uh, function so where you just pass some HTML to it. So here we have a div with class div class and ID some ID, um, and with a single function you can basically convert this you know plain HTML block into its its equivalent uh, in uh, in R. So you've got uh, you know the shiny tags. It's a div tag. You're giving it some the class name that appeared in in, in the HTML and then the ID that appeared in, in HTML. Um, Uh, and then if uh, there's a little flag, if you want, if you want, uh, if you if you if you want to kind of have this uh, pre prefixed uh, with with tags, you can you can you can have it or or, or not depending on on your preference. Um, so they're kind of going to do a little case study through with this chapter. I, I didn't make slides simply. Well, number one, I'm I'm, I'm lazy and ran out of. Uh, number one, lazy. Number two, ran out of time. Number three, I think this is yet again another chapter where it's this kind of serial walkthrough of steps where it's probably you know best to just look at the book rather than reproduce it in, in some kind of other form. Um, but the 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 author kind of gives a walkthrough of how a uh, chapant might work um, with a with a very helpful case study of 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 Bulma, which uh, it, you know is is a I think a reasonably Reasonably popular framework, um, and what's interesting about it um, is that at least for this this section, um, is that we won't have to worry about the JavaScript part now. The JavaScript part will be a little bit of an ad, an optional add-on because in this framework of Bulma, uh, apparently it doesn't doesn't have any JavaScript in it. It's just HTML and CSS, uh, so we don't have to worry about the JavaScript for now. We can work through just HTML and CSS, build a nice. Um, working understanding of how this works, then we can, we can come to the JavaScript part a little bit later, if, if so desired. Um, right. Uh, so they just kind of initialized the, the package using a chapon, create chapon. So this is kind of like, you know, create Gollum or some other, some other thing, uh, other thing where you're just in effect creating a lot of the, the, um, the um, what do you call it? The um, the scaffolding uh, to put things in in place, um, and you know, just as Gollum kind of has an opinionated set of things that it offers you out of the box, so does Chapant. Uh, so in in the description, um, you know, in the description file, it kind of as a convenience for you imports a few things that you'll likely need. Uh, shiny HTML tools and utils, um, and then of course you can add to that description file as you see fit. Um, it creates an R directory for you that's populated with you know one little thing that'll contain your your, your scripts, um, and, and and then it has a few uh, few tools as I was mentioning earlier that are kind of convenience functions that allow that help you um, add add uh, HTML dependencies. Um, and do some other things as well. And you also see a few other pack, uh, folders that are maybe not that commonly, they aren't commonly seen elsewhere. Um, this is more for the HTML side. 
Um, so you can see, for example, the source JS for, for, for JavaScript. Um, you'll see uh, the node modules, um, yeah, node underscore modules package, package hyphen uh, lock.json. Um, uh, so these these are these are some things that are that are helpful for for the JavaScript uh, management part that maybe we'll come we'll come to later. Again, these are kind of created out of the box for you, so that should you need them, they're there for you. Uh, and if not, you can just just delete them. Um, uh, so I guess then for the first the first part, so kind of coming back to this this uh, roadmap here, um, external dependencies converting. You know, step number one. Uh, handle HTML dependencies. Step number two: convert um, HTML um, components into into um, R scripts that generate those components. Um, and uh, sorry, just a second, I was going to open the chat. Oh, okay, got it. Sorry, thanks, Trevin. Um, uh, and and so with with the HTML dependencies, um, it, it it's it's Basically, you can kind of uh, execute this this function within um, within a shopon that, that'll that'll allow you to build build an HTML dependency. Um, you know, for for kind of uh, memory, like you can create the HTML dependency as you can see as the following you know bottom of the screen right here. Just create this uh, with HTML tools, this HTML dependency object that that gives the name of the thing, the version of the thing, where to find the thing. Uh, and then you know points to, to to style sheets, right? You can do that. You can do that manually, um, or or you could create some function like add bulma, whatever, right? Um, uh, or I'm sorry, this is a, 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 there are two things: creates a dependency object and then creates um, creates this uh, this function that adds um, this dependency uh, into into your into your tags. Uh, so you can populate this manually um, as we did in previous chapters, ch chapters, but you know it's kind of time-consuming, tedious, um, and, and and so we've you have this function create uh, uh, create dependency from a uh, charpente that, that that'll make things really a lot a lot easier for you. Um, uh, and with with this, with this function, you kind of have two two options um, on how you could create the dependency. Uh, you know, invoking it as you can see in one of these two ways. Um, so either either you can um, have the file uh, exist locally, um, or, or say kind of have your um, your your dependencies exist locally within your 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 package, um, or alternatively you can you can have them um, you know point to a content content delivery network. Um, so in this case, um, where you've got the uh, uh, uh options local equals false um here here you you're going to be basically um getting getting this from a content delivery network right or in the package you're getting it from the content delivery network and then the user themselves also as they're as they're using your your template uh will 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 be gathering kind of you know the html templates and css uh style sheets from from a content delivery network right so that's 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 one option um, and by default, um, it does the thing which the author kind of recommends that that you instead do is 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 uh, basically have all of this this content downloaded locally, um, and it'll it'll help you with that. Um, I think I've just quickly powered over powered past something that was useful. This is one thing I didn't delve too much into, but I I, I had the impression somehow. Um, uh, apologies, I really haven't spent enough time here. Uh, is is this content delivery network? I think we're using the JS Deliver, um, perhaps to kind of as a content delivery network to kind of grab onto the the assets um, uh, that you want, like in this case Bulma, and then and download it. Yeah, go ahead, Russ. I see. Yeah, no, that was just uh, wonder, like how one would indicate to it that you wanted to use the, um you know a a uh in development thing that isn't yet on 
suggest mm. deliver or an alternative CDN or something like that. And it, it, it sounds like it probably won't really be possible in that setting, but I, I guess you can probably define the dependencies the same way you would in like HTML widgets or something like that. Um, yeah, I guess that's I guess that's the fallback because I mean, looking at this create sorry this create dependency function here, name tag. Um, presumably, you'd modify the options for for. Yeah, let me see if I have. Let me see if I have this uh, on R Studio or uh, on my local version of R. If not, I can quickly install it. Just one second as it gets fired up. Yeah, it looks like it's just a flag here. Oops. Mm -hmm. Not this is me clicking too much or Windows doing as it loves to do things I don't want it to do. I've got two instances of our studio opening. Um, yeah, it looks like it's simply just a flag in this case about whether you want it to, to be local or not. I guess okay. pres presumably it's just, I don't know anything. I don't know much about JS Deliver. I, I don't. Do you, Russ, uh, whether it's really like a kind of a, it it kind of is to this area sort of um, what uh, what what CRAN is to R? Um, yeah, yeah, I think so. It, it's it's something, it's one of the, I mean, there are a lot of CDNs, but this is one that I, I'd actually heard of. So, okay. you know, that was kind of pleasing. But um, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, so obviously you you're what have you got on there? The examples, jQuery and a few others and, and stuff. And yeah, it, it's yeah, it's similar to Cram. Similar to probably more similar to like is it Pip or P yeah. Pi PI or something, the 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 the, the Python thing yeah. where there's less um um, review before yeah yeah but uh, yeah cool yeah that's interesting i kind of wonder why they went with this instead of just the uh, npm um i don't know i'm familiar well at least by name with npm um but that's that's about it yeah maybe it's just easier um i don't know i don't know as this, this isn't this isn't my sphere <laughs> yes but um and npm isn't it's not really for um for, for, it, it's you wouldn't use npm to specify the location of dependencies for an app that will run in a user's browser you know that that user's browser will have to obtain any dependency source code from um a, a cdn or through you providing it directly along with the bundle of code that you send over to them when they open your app. Um, the NPM's more for like installing packages for use on your development machine. And okay, uh, I, th I, th I think it's something along them lines. Got it. Um, got it. That makes sense. Um, so I didn't have Chapant on my, my instance of R, so I was just kind of loading as we were talking. Um, so we can come back to it and actually look at the uh, look, look at things in a bit more detail if useful later. Um, yeah, um, there must be more to this this Chapant options here because I, I, I'd forgotten about this part until coming to it now is uh you, you seems like you can also target which files to pull from the cdn um i guess as you would from a cdn whether you want to have you know the minified version of uh for example your css style sheets or or not um 
I'm not sure what this one is actually. Again, out of out of my wheelhouse um, uh, bundle. Um, I, mean, I guess this would be useful if you're working in Hebrew or Arabic or uh, Farsi, I guess. Uh, right to left script. Um, anyway, anyway, you can specify some options with Chapont options. It, my my kind of crude intuitive understanding of this is in, in effect this allows you to query js deliver and pull down the the, the assets that you that you want right um by providing some you know uh, some keywords or some flags that say where, which 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 of the collection of assets you want you want and it you know it may be that some of these things don't exist for certain uh, for certain options. Um, uh, yeah, uh, so yeah, here's here's an example. For instance, some templates like Bootstrap uh, have bundle min, min, whereas Bulma doesn't. Um, right, so some assets may not exist, but this this kind of chapant options allows you to, in effect, like fetch programmatically fetch the thing the things that you you want from the CDN. As you're setting up your your template package, um, good. Um, right, um, and then it looks to create for you this kind of template, um, this template function right here, like add. Bulma dependencies, um, yeah, that that kind of points to where where to find where to find the uh, those those um, those dependencies, um, so that you can the user can kind of uh, end user can kind of load that uh, into kind of the head of head of the page uh, of, the, of the of the shiny app as 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 a dependency. Uh, so this is the case for kind of the, the script you'll get if you have a local local dependency um, so it's pointing into your into your into the file system of your package uh, to find the style sheet whereas if if you're using the CDN option then it'll point to the the URL where where the as the, the required assets assets can be can be found uh, right um, now kind of going over so this is kind of Broadly, like topic one, right? So as 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 we saw in the past chapters, like, like we had this this first chapter in this this uh, this section defining dependencies. Um, so in effect, we've seen how Chapont uh, handles handles that just through a, a, a function create create dependency that um, takes a few arguments and then does some of the 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 tedious I don't know heavy lifting, but the tedious lifting for us. Um, and now, kind of. We're coming to step number two um, uh, it, that, that this chapter lays out, which corresponds broadly to kind of what we saw in chapter, somewhat chapter 17, um, uh, is really you know, taking the template um, that exists for the page overall and for you know, certain components of the page, and then creating corresponding R functions that, that offer, offered our users the ability to kind of reuse those, those components um, and kind of pipe, pipe into them useful information from, from through R, um, and so the task that that Chapant is going to help here is it's going to take this, uh, it's going to take some HTML and then uh, change Opresto, change it into to R R code for us. Um, so here's, for example, the, the kind of the template starter page for for Bulma from from Bulma's documentation. We can take take that thing uh, above and 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 then convert that into into HTML um, through this uh, uh, HTML to R uh code so we can you know if we just kind of copied and pasted this into the command line um and executed this um then indicating where uh where to put this so this will be an html um folder kind of within our, our package folder system uh then it'll create this this for us whoops sorry um this this r code for us right which which i think faithfully yeah pretty faithfully Charles said, okay. Yeah, it looks looks on first pass like it pretty faithfully transforms it into some nice some nice R code for us. All 
and so we could kind of create this uh, this this is a bit simplified just for presentation purposes, but this this uh, function Bulma page, which would take kind of as its inner content like this this template right that you see here uh, that's been transformed to R, and then just makes it makes it into a function where the end user could provide some parameters that would be input to the page. So here we had our page, and here we're just showing that they could. For example, the, the user could provide the title that uh, that was to appear into the page, and then um, and then a set of a set of tags here through the through the dots. Um, it can provide a provide a body to the page <clears throat> that'll be in the Bulma. The Bulma it'll be basically like a Bulma um, a page that'll uh, you know load the dependencies, the HTML dependencies behind the scene, and then we'll kind of basically replicate. Uh, the idea, broad idea, being like replicate some of the components of of the Bulma package. In this case, like the page, the page layout. Yeah, go ahead, Russ. So, was the Bulma page function? Is this something that Sharpon has added without any kind of input from aside from just passing in the the HTML text? Has that, has that been populated? Without any that was that was a question I was having too. Um, I don't think that's the case here. Right. Um, okay. I mean, I, I think it kind of provides us the inner. You know, it provide it, it kind mm. of provides us the the this framework right here, and then it's left to the developer to kind of figure okay. out how they want to modify it. At least that's my my under, yeah. my understanding. Yeah. Because it doesn't look like that there's a um, a function that that uh, that kind of creates creates the component or at least that the author is is uh yeah yeah is showing here and i and, and i'll be very honest i i didn't look i didn't look too much into chapons to, to to see to see whether whether it does that because you know i mean it would be quite nice uh if it could somehow i mean yeah if, yeah. if, it, if only like created a function with a name and then has the contents right you know yeah, that, that would yeah. be kind of nice it's uh yeah i, th I think it might be unnecessarily overcomplicating over you know um the the package for uh, to yeah. have it all because that would probably involve a lot of like uh ai and stuff to, to be able to do that but anyway yeah i was just wondering because it yeah i don't be... know i don't know if it'd be too hard for the package to do that i wonder because it, i mean in a certain sense like you know you could just like you have um what is it like edit Edit R is that what it is in use R? I, I, I use this. I don't. I don't use that very much. But uh, you know, you have this this uh, uh, function that kind of um, creates, you know, creates a new file for you, right? Or in Gollum, you know, you've got like Gollum, um, like Gollum, uh, you know, add module, uh, you know, the, the, those those kind of things. So, um, I mean, granted, in this case, it just provides the the scaffolding and not the contents but if if here you've got some mechanism that can give you draft contents and also provides a scaffolding i mean i guess you could pair it together um yeah i don't know um i, I guess we'll look at that later that's kind of an interesting idea um uh so so now we kind of shift from so the author kind of set out these three kind of areas that the chapter is going to talk about. So we saw how to create the to create the HTML dependency with a little bit greater ease than we had in the past. Um, definitely to create um, you know, how Chapont will help help you move more quickly and maybe faithfully um, from from HTML to equivalent R. Um, you know, via this HTML two R function, um, so that you can you know create these create these um, create these functions that will kind of deliver those those components and in, in R, um, and then now we'll come to the last part of the the, the JavaScript, which I openly will say I, I think I master quite a lot less. Um, so so far so far the uh, you know we'd seen. At least for the case of Bulma, that you know, for the CDN, you're going to get some HTML template. And you're going to get you're going to get CSS style sheets. You're not going to get JavaScript with Bulma. It's a maybe a very particular case, um, but but there is 
there is another there is another library, I guess, kind of sister library called Bulma JS, um, that that you can you can use to kind of accompany Bulma, um, and 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 so you you have this other this other uh, function here that the author talks about get dependency assets and you can point now to um, you know on on JS delivery uh, you can kind of point to where you can fetch those those assets so here you can fetch fetch the the JavaScript um, from from the from the CDN it's the same CDN um, and then you can see here it's it's going to be downloading those those things those for for you so the, the file names and the hash etc um, Um, sorry, just finding my spot here. Yeah, so at, as before, we'll have to kind of create a dependency. So in this case for Shiny, or sorry, for, for Bulma.js. Um, and I, I think here, the one thing the author the author does kind of remind you of is that you know there may be a lot. I think this probably holds equally for for everything, but makes a point of the author makes a point of this for for the JavaScript. Is there may there may be a lot that comes with this comes with the the JavaScript library, but just keep what you want so that the ultimately kind of the payload for the page is 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 as small as as uh, as, as is possible. Um, and um, yeah, I guess also as a developer, I have to manage manage only the few things you need and presumably also understand. Um, so feel free to, to, to pare down um, what's fetched from this, the CDN since this is going to be stored locally and just um, just keep 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 only what you need. Um, let's see. Yeah, and this is kind of, I guess, a, a nice little reminder here too. Um, you know, as as we're working through this, and we saw this in previous chapters, is that as you are creating user-facing functions, so let's imagine we have this this Bulma page <clears throat> function. We would kind of want to run it, um, you know, run it in Shiny, and just in this case, just a completely empty Shiny app. But look at kind of the head. I mean, look in, inspect the page with the dev. Uh, Developer tools to to basically see that all of your all of the dependencies that you expect, or at least that you think that you're you're registering as dependencies, are actually shown within the page. So equally true for kind of the CSS stuff as 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 for the JavaScript. You need to you, you would want to see all of that that loaded within your 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 page. So I guess this is kind of an additional step that seems that you'd have to take as as a as a template package developer. Um, I guess this might be automatable to some degree. Um, is is you know as you're as you're adding dependencies, make sure that those dependencies appear in some in some empty page because uh, that's that's what you want. If they don't append there, sorry, if they don't if they don't appear there, or don't appear there in the way in which you need them to appear, or the sequence in which they need to be loaded, then that's 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 a problem. Um, I'm I'm guessing that you know for for testing. Um, for testing, you could you could probably handle that with, with test that, although that might be a bit beyond my my abilities in the, in the sense of you know you could generate you could generate an HTML page I guess, and then somehow inspect inspect the page and confirm that the contents you expect are are there. Um, in practice, um, I've not I've not done that one. Um, yeah um yeah i'm not i'm not sure what the best way would be to do that to be honest um so certainly i think i i believe there's how would it work so the the shiny ui functions um will print out the the kind of html content that should go in you know nested within the the mm. body of a web page but 
when you actually create the app in entirety there's additional components to get put in the head and things like that to to handle all your dependencies and things like that um i think there's a way of getting what the initial html should look like in it in its entirety from um the, the functions in shiny i just can't remember exactly which one it is but the, there will be a way to to compute that and check that okay. the dependencies are in the head and things yeah 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 i mean i think you're right russ i mean it, it probably will be some shiny specific tooling because now that I, I don't know why i was thinking earlier oh yeah you could just create an html file <laughs> on disk and kind of like inspect it somehow but you know the shiny app at least to my knowledge is is going to be kind of an ephemeral thing um so i don't you'd have to have some like you say like some mechanism of inspect inspecting its its contents as as it gets loaded um yeah um right so uh i didn't delve deeply into this but you can kind of see some of the same principles um that uh, at, at play here that we um mentioned earlier uh is that you know if if we wanted to create you know custom custom handlers like let's say notifications or other things like that that involve involve some interplay between the page and and, and javascript you know we we need to in principle we we would need to we would need to code we would need to code that out um as as we did in, in kind of the previous in the previous chapters on like adding interactivity um uh and, and so shopfont has 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 a nice utility function for us as well as like create custom custom handler um and uh yeah maybe let's have a look at the the documentation here okay so we've got we've got a few um create input binding create output binding create custom handler um create JavaScript, et cetera. Okay. So there are lots of nice little utility functions that would help us with some of the tasks that we've been undertaking a bit manually in the, in, in the past. Um, that's pretty useful. Um, so custom handler, we got the name of the handler, the package name, where it's found. So this is this is that kind of esoteric directory that that we saw at the outset, you know, that the uh, Charpent creates for us, or one of the seemingly esoteric directories, so the JavaScript source code. Um, and then this would be opening the file, I guess, in our studio, add reference, I'm not sure what add reference is. Whether to add an import statement in main, ah, okay, that's right. Um, we'd have to have some main JavaScript file that would sort of like orchestrate the importing of, of the various, various functions that we've defined. Um, cool. And uh, so, you know, we'd have to have some function kind of like this, send notification message, um, ID some options, uh, or we'd compose compose our, 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 our message kind of as a list that will get transformed into JSON and then, and then kind of send, send the message uh, through the, the custom message handler. Um, by the session object, and then have something on the on the JavaScript side that uh, that's listening, that's listening for that that message, and then does does something about it. Um, Let's create input findings, which we just kind of briefly saw. Um, and then that's a bunch of bunch of methods. Interesting. I think maybe. Um, 
perhaps perhaps I'll just uh, maybe I'll just go through a little bit of the the shop on workflow, maybe to kind of get a little bit of an intuition, better intuition uh, for how this works. Uh, Create shop bond, packet path. Uh, let me just grab the, the path of my download folder for lack of a better place to put it. Actually, I guess I could do this. Let's do it that way. Okay, so this looks very, sorry, it's a little bit bigger. This this uh, definitely reminds me of using of using use this and our golem. Uh, so it seems like it's doing a lot of the a lot of the heavy lifting for us. So maybe this isn't going to work. joys of working on Windows. Hmm. Okay, I guess I have a required argument that I'm not seeing. Ah, okay. Indeed, I need to specify a license. Um, I guess it's just going to be, I'll assume I can write something like that. That doesn't work. Oh, okay, sorry. But it, re reading, reading is essential. Um, I guess that's what they're expecting. All right, let me actually read kind of fine. Okay, it already exists. That's the problem. Yeah, so um hold on, but um uh it's it's taking the 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 <laughs> the the value that was returned by your call to use MIT license. It returned true, so it's trying to it's trying to then find a function called use true license within use this. I think what you just have to do is put license equals lowercase mit. Okay, and then it will convert that into the use mit license function and call that as a as a string. You think as a string? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So let me see if I can. Kill this on my okay. Okay, brilliant. Uh, override pre existing. I agree. Very cool. Wow, it's doing quite a lot. Okay, so the expected stuff creates description for us. Uh, okay, creates a project, okay. <laughs> the red bullet steps, okay. It's okay. It's probably the issue. It seems like I, as I have this open, Windows has kind of got a lock on the folder, so I can't really. Uh, let me let me just create blah to uh, see if we have any other any better luck. Overwrite uh, pre-existing. 
Okay. Sure. Okay. And now with considerable delay, another window blah has opened up. <laughs> I don't know if this is just my high resource usage on my computer or, uh, or uh, yeah. Uh, All right, let's see if indeed it opens another instance. There we go. Telltale R orb. Okay, yeah, so I'll dive into the, <laughs> the errors and comments later to see if I can, I can figure out what's going on. But I mean, it, we, we do have a lot of the things we kind of expect here. Um, so we've got description file, project um, file, git ignore, folders. Yeah, as as promised with some some boilerplate uh, code. Add dependencies. Okay. And then. And we have a, you know, a few other things. So we've got the, in the JavaScript folder, a main.js um, main uh, file that's kind of going to orchestrate um, kind of loading all of our JavaScript files and the functions they contain. But, uh, and then I guess there's some basic JavaScript tests here. Interesting. Um, styles. Okay, main SCSS. So kind of on the, the SCSS side to kind of presumably orchestrate um, creation of your of your of your of your C of your actual CSS from like a few modularized SCSS files. A package JSON. Interesting. Okay. Um, okay. So it's just registering a few of the things that it created for us. So I guess this is a node command to build the app for development, build for production, testing, and then a few of the things that I guess were. I guess it didn't bring over the dependencies and then the, the development dependencies, which I guess Russ and I from our other book, Cubly Saw, is kind of a nice thing that in Node world exists that sadly doesn't exist in R is you can register dependencies for actual development instead of as different from like dependencies for actually your package. Um, okay, cool. Uh, it gets a lot of neat stuff here. Um, maybe. Let's do create charpente, create dependency name. Huh. Let's see. Any 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 favorites <laughs> of things on which to depend? Um, I don't know if it's gonna be bootstrap. It's gonna be bootstrap five or BS five. We'll see what happens here. Okay, no bootstrap five. Okay, no luck either. Well, or actually let's just do Bulma. I guess I probably need a version number, but I guess I'll take latest. JS deliver package MGM Bulma. 
a bootstrap can be got from JS Deliver. It's just it. It. I think you'd use just the word bootstrap though, rather than any subsequent number. No dice. It's a well. It, there's a typo in the thing. It's bootstrap. Ah, sorry. <laughs> Oh, still, still okay. no luck. Okay. Um, could funny. could 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 be since I'm in the office, it could be some uh, man in the middle west filtering going on. Um, yeah. Anyway, um, I just kind of want to do a little bit of that to maybe start to build some of the intuition, but sadly, some of the attempts have, have failed. Um, but I, I don't know. I thought it was kind of a neat little neat little um. A neat function that um, would be very useful if um, if one wanted to develop a template package. Well, I think maybe as homework, I'll, and, and I can kind of comment on Slack if I get around to this. But it'd be interesting to know if some of the common, um, you know, if some of the other um, template packages out there actually use this. I mean, you know, Gollum seems like it's very widely used. Um, but I have no no real sense of the extent to which this this is used. So I guess the ones I know of, I guess unfortunately are probably are Epsilon products and probably, you know, there's probably an Epsilon way of doing things would be like what uh so shiny fluent, is that what it is? Um shiny fluent, and then there's another one I remember was I think was mentioned in one of the earlier chapters um of this book. But it'd be interesting to kind of see. I don't know if there, there's a. There's, I don't know if there's looking at the source of kind of like a a fingerprints that that can tell you that someone used uh, Chapant to, to to create this. I mean, I guess there is kind of for Gollum the the dev the dev folder, which I think makes a lot of sense, but is not really found elsewhere in our universe. But uh, it'd be kind of interesting to see 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 how others tackle tackle this task. But the Chapant looks like a a neat a neat way to neat way to do so. Um, Source okay, source code's probably not going to tell me very much. Okay, we don't have S SRC JS. Ah, thanks, Russ. Shiny Mobile. Ah, okay. N and naturally, since this is uh, one of David's, one of the author's packages. Uh, very cool. Probably there might be might be others. There we go. Uh, no, one more. There we go. Probably there are a few others like shiny. I wonder if BS4 dash has that. Not seeing it. Shiny local stores. That sounds interesting. Anyway, um, neat, neat little chapter that kind of wraps, and in a sense, it doesn't wrap things up so much as shows shows a potentially better way uh, of of doing things. Ah, cool. Thanks, Russ. So they load it here. Very cool. Oh, tools build. Yeah, so it looks like it's definitely been used in practice. Um, the uh, admittedly by its its own author, but um, yeah, it's. I mean, it's not like. I mean, Shiny Mobile was last updated in the end of last year, so it's it's still in development and stuff. Uh, and um, presumably, they presumably it shop shop on is isn't a an actual dependency mm -hmm. um, because it's not 
yet on Cran, but some of the right. packages that have been produced using it are. Um, yeah. Cool. Yeah, I mean, yeah. this feels like a little, uh, I mean, maybe if it hasn't taken off, it's uh, maybe among other reasons, because it, it feels to me, and perhaps I'm, I'm wrong on this front, that it, uh, it's this, <clears throat> this kind of little like developing package templates, uh, or, or sorry, template packages rather, um, is a bit is a bit niche uh, um, in the sense, I guess it would require someone on the shiny side to know what is going on in the world out, well, in, in kind of the regular web dev world and then, you know, have some ideas about how to bring bring those things over, over to R. Um, that's kind of my intuition. Whereas, you know, and that would be done like, maybe countably few times. Uh, uh, I mean, to the extent there are frameworks you could do it, but, you know, Gollum packages, anybody yeah. could create a Gollum package. Uh, um, you just have to have an idea. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Anyway, um, I think we should probably leave it there for this yep. week. Um, uh, brilliant. Yeah. Uh, thanks. Um, the um, Yes, it did seem like the it it would be nice if there were some tools to <laughs> simplify the um the stuff we were doing in the previous part of this book um uh what are we doing next so there's a case study another case study on mobile development so presumably this relates to shiny mobile that we've just looked at um uh which we'll be starting next week Okay, uh, thanks, Arthur, for um, taking us through that chapter. Uh, I hope to see some of you next week. Um, 